Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome to episode 34 of Space Engineers, and I've got one hell of a ship to show you. This is probably by far one of my craziest designs, incorporating some of the things that I've done in previous ships, but I've kind of done it to the extreme, so I'm going to go through this ship today and talk about it, and talk about little features and things that I worked out along the way. So the first of all, this ship's called Nightmare, because it is... A ship that you would have some serious nightmares about. It is a pirate ship, but it is a pirate ship that can hold its own in a fight. We've got three guns up here, and then we've got the fourth gun that I wouldn't even call a gun because it's going to devastate whatever it hits so badly that it's just more like a, a doom ray. So up front, we've got the three barrel one, nice clearance, 360 view. Same on all these, but we've only got two barrels in each one of these guys. And these black areas are basically areas where I've double, almost triple reinforced the armor. So this thing won't be going down without a serious fight or a super spam of small rockets from small ships, you could say. Anyway, let's move down and I'm going to show you what's actually below. So I don't know if you've seen too many of them World War II sort of German blimps they have, but they tend to have like a, a dockyard underneath the ship. And that's what I thought I would do. Instead of having an enclosed hangar, Obviously the ships are vulnerable to their attack you could say, but I've decided that it's probably better to have them underneath here in this sort of neat orienta orientation because you can just basically launch them really fast and you can also use the inertia because as the ship's travelling forward you can hit reverse in your little um, fighter and you scoop out, go out the back here and you could deploy fighters so much faster than using any conventional door. I'm not going to show you inside of this video because it's still under construction. Even though I'm going to release it on the Steam Workshop, there's a few things that I still need to fix and get running, especially the interior needs a lot of looking at. So as we come out of here, this is where the fighters will be launching from. We see this massive, and what I think is pretty intimidating sort of skull that we've got at the back here. And it also works as an extra layer of armor. On both sides here, we have the corridor that leads to the rear of the ship that you may think is some sort of command center. But is it? That's the question. When, when, the thing is, though, when I release these things as well on the Steam's Workshop, it's like releasing a weapon of mass destruction and wondering what could possibly happen, what possibly could go wrong. So there we've got the six-barrel ultimate cannon of death, and this this seriously needs a name. And I've been trying to think of a name for the last hour and a half, but I've just not got one. So if you've got a name for this sort of cannon, that's maybe like the the annihilator. No, not the annihilator. That sounds pretty wrong. Um, but at the side here, we've got some extra parts here. You're probably wondering why I've got these on. Basically, these work just as well as one thick block when I've tested them out. And they are so much easier to actually use because they're so much lighter. So they make your designs a lot lighter and you can move a lot quicker. So going down here, we have inside the back of the turret basically a storage location for ammunition. You can see some of the crates there, and you can see the pure amount of gyroscopes you actually need to turn this turret, and it still doesn't turn fast, so I'm going to have to work on that as well. So this is where all the ammunition will be stored. You'll reload your missile pods from in here. You'll be able to have direct access to the barrels once it's finished. But we're going to have to see how it works reloading the rockets as well. So let's actually get in this cannon and see what sort of devastation we can do. I've not really got a target, but maybe we can reach the asteroid over there with some of the fire, but I'm not too sure but you'll soon see the devastation of this cannon. Um, the, the only issue that I've noticed with it is it doesn't have too much of a wide area. Due to me building the engines at the side of it, it can only really see it's 45 degrees up and down and then angling, but maybe the driver of the ship could be a bit responsible and uh, help you fire this thing. So let's get the hood up. I don't know how well we're going to be able to look in third person with this, but there we go. That is absolute death in a very neat package, you could say. Well, it's not a neat package, it's pretty large. So let's get hood up. Let's switch to our missile type and let's fire one of these things away. Let's make sure we're not aiming at anything. So, no, no, we're not aiming at anything. And we'll try to get a salvo of these rockets away. So let's get the first salvo. Are you ready for this? Oh my god, it looks like slow motion fire. Let me just see how far I can actually zoom away. Let me zoom really far away. Really far away. Let me try this again. Oh, it's like a slow rate of fire because there's that many missiles firing. <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You can just see all the miniature rockets in each barrel firing away. Right, let's leave that thing. Let them rockets go flying off into oblivion, you could say. 
So the next thing we need to do is get rid of our hood quickly. And I'm going to take you around to the front turrets and we're just going to have a little look inside. I don't want to look too much because there's not too much done. I'm going to move on to a little bit of a tutorial that you guys have really requested a lot. And the first thing that I want to go on is a lot of you guys have been asking how do you attach small ships to large ships and so on. And you do it with landing gears. It's, it's really simple. I'll show you how this sign works. This sign is actually a small ship and all I've done is I'll quickly show you. Basically, the text letters have been written out with the little blocks, and then on the back, we've got it like a magnet, like a big fridge magnet that you'll stick on the side of your fridge. And to get in position, all we need to do is actually get a smaller little craft like this. If you've seen my episodes before, you would have seen the Honey Badger, and we need to position it next to the actual ship. So, what I've already done to save a little bit of time is actually move it really close to the actual ship's hull. So, all I have to do is actually apply it using the honey badger to get close and then basically press it on so it's angled the same way so well, there we go we've got the night nightmare sign and we need to get in position with the honey badger just to push it and get it into that right angle but the first thing we want to do before we actually make contact is actually get a little bit of a control panel like so on this so as soon as we get into that position we can quickly jump out and we can fix it up really fast so there we go, and now we need to accelerate forward, and we should have contact, P there, perfect, and now all we have to do is press on it, and basically we should, if we don't do this too fast, get a perfect balance and be able to actually put this sign on the ship. So we're gaining a bit of distance between it, and you've got to be careful because the ship will, sw will swing quite violently in some cases because of its weight so you don't want to come too fast and sometimes it's best to just let let the, let the actual inertia take over once it started going so the inertia started to take over now and we probably do need to do only very little to get this sign in position so it's just coming down nice and smooth make sure it's as straight as possible uh, we need a little bit of an angle up perhaps um, that'll be perfect and then a little bit more thrust and we should seal the deal and plant it on the side of the ship perfectly so just a little bit more there we go edging it closer and what we've done here is we actually need to do two buttons at the same time and there we go we close the gap perfect and now we need to hop in this one locks landing gears are in proximity and lock them in place perfect so we now we can get rid of this and we can add, start adding the fanciness to this sign and we can get rid of this thing as well connected to it so all we do, get in that, disconnect the landing gears, and shoot off away, and our sign has been attached. Looks a bit wonky. I think I might have to straighten it up. So I'll see you in a moment. All right, so we've just came out of the hangar. Over there is one of the ways to the actual front of the ship, but back through here, I'll just take you to one of the rear areas that I find actually pretty interesting. So open this door nice and slowly. Can we get in? There we go. So taking us through here, you've got a nice little view down into the hangar bay. And then if you come through here, you take a right turn, and then you take a left. We have another scary hallway up to the rear of the ship where the observation area is and the access to the extra large turret. I'd like to thank you for watching and don't forget to check out the prototype that I've put up on the Steam Workshop and you can find it in the description below. So I'll see you next time.